So yes, um, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so I was going to start off just very briefly by explaining for those who are unfamiliar with uh, Cure Parkinson's what we do. Um, founded in 2005, we're a medical research charity that's focused on disease modification for Parkinson's. So we um, facilitate, fund and support research that is um, focused on slowing, stopping or reversing Parkinson's. We don't do anything um, outside of that in terms of symptomatic treatments, etc. Um, how do we support um, Parkinson's, re Parkinson's research? We have a wonderful um, committee of um, research experts and um, advocates, research advocates from the Parkinson's community, and they meet uh, four times a year. And we give we put out a call for research grants. All of the applications that come to us go to these um, individuals and they make recommendations to our trustees as to what should and should not be funded. Uh, we fund both preclinically as well as clinically. Preclinically, we only fund within five years of um, clinical testing, and it must be of a disease modifying nature. So an example of this is um, some research that was awarded funding in 2023. Um, Professor Michael um, Schwarzschild at uh, Harvard University in Boston, he's at Massachusetts General Hospital, he was funded um, by Cure Parkinson's to, do, to look at three molecules um, in, uh, in models of Parkinson's, those molecules being ibuprofen, methylcobalamin, which is a type of uh, vitamin B12, and also benfothiamine, which is a form of uh, vitamin B1. Uh, all three of these molecules have been evaluated by our ILCT um, committee, which was what uh, Richard was speaking about earlier in the day. Uh, but one of the problems with, well, one of the issues that we're faced with RLCT is how to feed back uh, the information and recommendations from the committee to the research community. And so we set up the um, ILCT pipeline research acceleration program where we put out a call. Well, it's a tool for the committee basically to say we want to see more research on these three or four molecules. And we go out and we put out a call saying this is what, we, this is, these are the molecules and we'd like to see them in this particular model, or we'd like to see this particular piece of research. So it's a very specific call that we make to the, to the Parkinson's research community. And clinically, um, uh, we have the ILCT committee, which uh, Richard was talking about earlier. Uh, it's been running for 12 years. This is, as Richard said, the photo from the um, 2023 meeting. Um, and they have, um, prioritize many different molecules. Most recently, um, we had the depan sutral trial um, funded by Cure Parkinson's. Um, so depan sutral is a um, anti-inflammatory molecule. It was prioritized by the ILCT committee in 2022. And um, it, uh, and inflammation is the way that the, the body tells, the body, the immune system tells the body that something's wrong. And um, depan sutral targets a very specific part of that process, which is called the NLRP3 inflammasome. And you can think of that as just an amplifier of the um, immune response. So there could be a problem in the body and there's a bit of inflammation. If there's activation of the NLRP3 inflammasome, that's going to amplify that signal that something's wrong. Um, and it has been shown that people with P Parkinson's have um, NLRP3 activation um, in their bodies. So uh, there has been a molecule, depan sutral, which has been developed by a biotech company called Olatech. And um, as I said, in 2022, that should be, sorry, is the first typo. Um, it was prioritized by the ILCT committee uh, for clinical testing. And um, um, this, sorry, 2024, yes, this is, that number's correct. I was just double checking myself there. Um, Cure Parkinson's awarded funding to uh, Dr. Caroline Williams Gray at um, Cambridge University to conduct a phase two clinical trial of depan sutral in people with Parkinson's. So the trial is going to involve 36 people who will be treated with um, either depan sutral um, for up to um, 12 weeks, um, depan sutral or placebo, excuse me. And the first, it's, it's a two-phase study. So the first phase will involve six months of double-blind 
uh, randomization analysis. And then in the second um, phase, the second, the next six months, there will be, um, everybody will be on drug. Um, it'll be an open label extension. So everyone will know that they're on the drug at that point. And the results of this will hopefully help to determine whether Depensutral is um, worthy of further evaluation in a much larger phase um, three clinical trial, which will attest its actual potential against um, slowing Parkinson's. Um, and this is coming on the back of another clinical trial that Cure Parkinson's funded um, that uh, Dr. Williams Gray is conducting at the moment on a molecule called um, as, as, as a thiopurine. This is an immunosuppression um, medication. It's used in, as an anti-inflammatory um, for people that have conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and Cure Parkinson's has been funding the ASA PD study, as it's been called, um, which has involved um, 60 participants who have been treated for 12 months. Um, a lot of the learnings that have come from this study we're leveraging um, in the new DAPA PD study, are the resources and the tools that they've developed in this study that are going to be applied to the DAPA study. This study, we will find the, um, we expect the results to be available um, in 2025. So that's something to look out for next year. We also have the Ambroxol study. Um, the Ambroxol program has been going for some time now. The Ambroxol is a respiratory medication um, and it was ad identified in a drug screen as an activator or an um, elevator of a particular enzyme uh, that's reduced in people with Parkinson's. Um, and based on a lot of preclinical data suggesting it's having a neuroprotective effect in models of Parkinson's, um, Cure Parkinson's funded the um, Ambroxol and Disease Modification in Parkinson's Disease or AMPD study. Uh, that involved 18 people, half of them actually carry a genetic variation associated um, with this enzyme, and um, they were treated for six months um, on Ambroxol. All of, everybody was on the same drug and they all knew it was open label. Um, but what it did, what was uh, really interesting is in, in cerebral spinal fluid, which is a liquid that you're surrounds your brain and you can um, sample by um, taking a spinal tap. Uh, we found, well, the researchers found elevation of this particular enzyme, which is called G-case. So this was really encouraging and that led to the uh, development of the new phase three study for the um, Ambroxol to slow progression in Parkinson's um, Aspro PD. Um, it's being led by Professor Anthony Shapiro at um, UCL it's going to be a two-year study involving 330 people, um, half of whom will be carrying um, a genetic variation in the gene associated with this um, enzyme, G-case. And the primary outcome will be um, the motor, um, will be part one to part three of um, UPDRS. Um, and the trial has been delayed due to um, a need to reformulate the um, treatment. Uh, the folks in the first study, the AMPD study, were required to take 24 tablets a day on top of the medication that they were um, using for their Parkinson's symptoms. It's a very bitter tasting um, drug as well. It's not on the tongue, but on the back of the throat. Um, so it's quite, uh, it was quite a heroic effort that um, all of them stayed in the study for six months. So um, before starting the phase three, we knew we had to reformulate the drug that's taken some time. But um, the reformulation is now complete. Uh, the contracting process associated with drug production is now being finalized. Uh, the trial um, uh, team have um, also made progress in terms of a trial manager has been employed and um, key documents such as um, ethics applications, et cetera, protocol uh, in, um, uh, in the final stages of being drafted as well. And they're identifying research centers that will be involved in the study and uh, we hope with our next update uh, in May, we'll have a timeline for the um, study. Um, and Cure Parkinson's has been supporting the PD Frontline uh, study, which has been set up. It's a platform for genetically sequencing people to identify trial-ready cohorts for four studies, such as um, ASPRO PD. So if you um, are interested, there is a poster out in the um, foyer and um, if 
if, um, if anyone wants to discuss that further, they could talk to Anaya maybe. Um, now, one of the issues with slow progress um, in, in the clinical trial, um, the, the big problem with the slow process in clinical testing has been the a way we conduct clinical trials. And a new project called EJS Act PD has been set up to deal with this. Traditionally, uh, clinical trial, conducting a clinical trial is a bit like building a football stadium, playing one match, and then deconstructing it again. So it takes a long time to set up the stadium, you play the match, and then you, it takes a long time to deconstruct it. And so you get this silly process that looks a bit like this, where you're building and deconstructing, building and deconstructing, building and deconstructing. What would really be ideal is if we shift from a football stadium type analogy to a conveyor belt that's just continuously testing new agents. And that is where the ACT-PD um, program comes into effect. It is a, what's called a multi-arm, multi-stage clinical trial platform. So you'll be testing multiple treatments versus one placebo arm, and you'll be, um, you'll be continuously treating them over time. So you'll be moving from phase two through to phase three across multiple years. Um, and what might occur is you'll find after year one that treatment two and treatment three are not working. There's no sign that there's um, any uh, effect. So you'll add, you'll take them out and you'll add treatment th four and treatment five while you continue with uh, assessing treatment uh, one. And eventually the hope is you get to a regulatory approval with treatment one as you bring in and take away treatments that are uh, bring in new treatments and take away treatments that aren't working. And this has worked for prostate cancer. Uh, this is Professor Max Palmer at um, UCL, and he is, was instrumental in setting up a program called Stampede. Um, and in 2015, they had their first, uh, from using this MAMS type platform model, they had their first change of um, practice um, in the clinic. And then two years later in 2017, the practice was changed again based on the results that came from the platform. And one year later, they had their third set of um, changes coming from the um, practice, coming from the platform. Uh, and so this is, this, this is what you want. You want continuous um, improvement in the, um, in the standard of care for people with Parkinson's. And because ACPD will be focused on disease modifying therapies, um, we, the, hope, the hope is we'll see faster progression in terms of clinically testing novel molecules. And Cure Parkinson's has been quite instrumental in uh, setting all of um, this work up. Um, we've been championing uh, the MAMS idea for Parkinson's for some time. In 2018, we funded work by Professor Camille Carroll um, to explore the practicalities of a a UK-based uh, MAMS platform for Parkinson's, and the work has been instrumental in supporting the um, ACT-PD uh, ap application that went to, firstly, the Edmund J. Safra Foundation to support the initial setting up of the um, program, and now to the um, government, the NIHR, for actually um, building the platform itself. And we've also had, um, we've been supporting the Australian Parkinson's mission as well. This is not a traditional MAMS platform in that with a MAMS platform, you're um, analyzing the results continuously and it's more, adapt it's more adaptive. With the Australian Parkinson's mission, they are simply looking at multiple arms against a single placebo um, over a 60 week period. And at the end of that study, they will be um, analyzing the results. Um, the three agents that are being tested are all ILCT, um, prioritized molecules and we're hoping to see the results of the Australian Parkinson's mission first study um, in 2025 so it'd be interesting to see the output of that but um, the um, sorry I've just had a mental blank that's jet lag kicking in yeah <laughs> I got back from New Zealand after 27 hours of flying two days ago so forgive me if I'm a bit rough um, Currently, the um, MAMS, uh, the ACT PD MAMS platform is um, under development. There's a 
a bunch of different working groups all working together, volunteers, both academic um, researchers, clinicians, as well as um, people with Parkinson's and Parkinson's advocates and carers and family members helping to set up the platform, focusing on different tasks such as funding, uh, resources, um, treatment selection. Um, and we are, current, we are awaiting at the moment news from the NIHR as to whether they will um, also support the funding of this program as well. We hope to learn more about this in the second half of uh, 2024. Until then, the uh, working groups are, are steadfastly working towards um, progressing the project. And Cure Parkinson's is also liaising with other groups around the world. Um, at the moment, Norway, France, and the US that are focused on developing their own MAMS platforms. Uh, for both Parkinson's as well as prodromal Parkinson's. So prodromal PD is where um, there are people at risk of developing Parkinson's and if we can start treating them at that early stage, maybe they don't go on to be diagnosed with the condition. And a MAMS platform is currently being set up for that. Um, and in addition to um, supporting these efforts, these um, groups are also asking for access to the ILCT dossiers that we generate. Um, and we're looking to harmonize a lot of the, the universal standards between the platforms to make um, cross analysis of results uh, much easier. So to finalize, uh, to summarize, excuse me, um, there's lots of very encouraging and compelling research uh, um, being supported by Cure Parkinson's. And um, so some very encouraging results coming from the clinical trials. I hope um, today has been, uh, has demonstrated that to you with the Lixisanotide results, for example. And um, there's lots of planning underway for future projects. Um, and there's certainly a lot to, of new results coming later this year, particularly around the GLP-1 agonists. We have the Stockholm results, and we also have the phase three exenatide results. So it's a very busy time for the organization. Um, and before I finish, I just want to thank the, the um, Cure Parkinson's team for everything that they do, both of the research team and the FunMart team.